very happy to have you here, especially to see this uh, new uh, <coughs> setup of our Maroney Wade collection. This is, this you know, the, uh, yes. a, a piece of furniture that I think you'd be well acquainted with, mm -hmm. the wardrobe from Lewis's home. And uh, actually, by some uh, strange circumstance, it, uh, this was bought at auction at Banbury. Oh. And this coat, which I take it was Warren's coat, Major Warren Lewis's oh. coat, or possibly C.S. Lewis's. It's a big, heavy, solid wool coat. That I don't remember Lewis wearing my coat. Well, it might well be, but it, I think more likely Warren's, I think. Uh, we had it paid. It looks... It looks uh, a little uh, mm. unclean, but it's, uh, it's it's clean. And anyway, we're so happy to have this wardrobe, which uh, well, children well, come to see. Well. And uh, I think you well, know well, that it was uh, handmade, hand carved by Lewis. No, I didn't know that actually. No, by Lewis's I knew it was an heirloom in the family. Uh, by Lewis's grandfather or his great grandfather, uh, we've never been able to ascertain which, but it came across from Belfast. Yes. To Oxford and then out to the kilns, and we're very, very happy. That's no, quite have an acquisition. As you were to be congratulated, I think, on, on getting it. Took a good deal of chasing, didn't it? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't mind the chase. No. Would you like no. to come down no. and take no. a look at other things? No. Well, on here is our collection of your books. We're very proud of them. We have first editions of all your books. That's impressive. And uh, also editions of paperbacks and such. Um, we have as complete a collection of your works as of anybody, uh, of our, any one of our seven writers, of our other six writers. By the way, uh, sometimes children come here to see the wardrobe, uh, Lewis's wardrobe, and, uh, and talk about the Narnia books, but I if I talk to them, I always tell them uh, something about the silver trumpet, which uh, we're happy to have. And uh, it's always a little surprise to scholars who study you to find out that you did a children's book. Did you intend this as a merely a children's book? Yes, it was the first book I ever wrote and was ever published. And I simply wanted to do a children's story. I mean, certain um, emotional... Um, attitudes of one's own came out to some extent in a symbolized form. I suppose the silver trumpet was, a, well, I suppose in my imagination, was a kind of symbol of a, a feeling element that I felt was omitted too much from social and family relations, but um, the, the whole point really was a children's story. And quite a number of children do seem to, to have been really taken with it. Um, I think I told you, Lewis told me that uh, Tolkien's children um, for a time regarded as a kind of Bible. I mean, that, that, that they, uh, many of the characters were kind of catchwords in the family. <laughs> uh, now, uh, shall we sit down? Well, Owen, it's going to be a little while before your lecture. And I've uh, been curious for a long time to know a little bit about your early relations with Lewis. We do have a great deal of material about the Great War and some of the philosophical and metaphysical oh. subjects that you discussed with Lewis in those early days, but uh, I'm rather ignorant about your early relations with Lewis. You, you met uh, uh, you you graduated from Wadham College at Oxford in 19 and 1921, and Lewis graduated in 1922. Did you meet at Wadham or, um, or university where Lewis? No, was? we met first of all. When you say at Wadham, actually the college was crowded then, and they were using a building just across the road as part of the uh, college accommodation, and a, a mutual friend. Leo Baker invited us both to tea. We in, undergraduates used to invite each other to tea quite a lot then, and other, other meals sometimes. And that was when we first met. Now, I think there is a certain amount of misconception about uh, 
my friendship with Lewis in those very early years, while we were still both undergraduates, we didn't see each other all that often. We'd meet occasionally and go for a walk or meet with this friend or perhaps other friends. But we were in different colleges. <coughs> we were, of course, busy and had our own groups of friends. And I didn't see him all that often. We were gradually, I think, feeling our way towards each other. I and mean, we went for a walk together and, uh, mm. and we're discovering sort of mutual areas of, of interest. But after we left Oxford, um, quite shortly afterwards, my wife and I had uh, a house in uh, a village called Long Crendon, about 15 miles from Oxford. Oh, yes. Um, and Lewis by then had, uh, well, I think he was, when we were first there, he was hanging about hoping to get a job as a don. And then, because he got one in Magdalen, and during that period, the second half of the 20s, really, was when I saw most of him. I would go and stay with him in his rooms at Oxford, and he, and he came quite often and stayed with us in our, in our house. Uh, it was a farm, actually, but because we were using it as a house in uh, in Long and it would stay two or three days. And, uh, how, how far was that from Oxford? Fifty miles. in two different ways, two very different ways. It can be taken as asking what is the truth about this or that question and how are we to ascertain it? Or it can be taken much more underminingly as asking what does one mean by truth? Is there such a thing? Is there really, is there really any difference between truth and error? And I think it's true to say that the world into which C.S. Lewis grew up and in which he lived out his life was one in which the second interpretation was insidiously asking the first. Moreover, that it was tending more and more to be answered by a few deliberately and consciously, but by an ever-increasing number only half-consciously in the negative. What Skeptical or Pyrrhonist philosophy of one kind or another was doing for the few, the popularization of a psychology that presupposed the Darwinian concept of an exclusively biological evolution was doing for the many.